Chapter 10, End the Deep. After beating the signal by El Hollis Resistance, your party, and you, and Bakshi rush into the streets after Serena and Ariana, only to find... Damn it. They're already here. Halt in the name of the Queen. No. Take them out, quickly. At your side, Serena's blade goes up in a blue fire, while Ariana tosses a small bead at the ground, which explodes in a massive cloud of smoke. Enchant my weapon. With a flick of your wrist, pale white sparks begin to caress your weapon, tr crackling with lightning, just waiting to be released. You slam your weapon right in the side of the figure's head, and electricity jumps to the metal of their mask. I don't take orders from you. Excellent work, Rain. Tyrell truly taught you well. Your friends make quick work of your nearby attackers, and Mal frowns as he cuts the last one down. Is it just me, or are these guys less fleshy than they should be? So that's why my axe are practically cutting them in half. You mean they're not human? They are constructs created by Nefara to protect her city. So they're like me. Like you? No one's like you, Valix. These guys could never be as beautiful, powerful, or as kind as you are. And suddenly, she begins kissing her ass. <laughs> she smiles shyly, her cheeks flushing a deep purple. Thank you, Rain. Wallace bumps affectionately against Valix's leg before you all take off down another alley. Is there a reason why they're dressed like that? It's said that their forms are too perfect for their former liver to look upon. I doubt that is the truth. We should assume everything Nefara says is a lie. As you dash around a corner, a construct grabs you by the back of your clothing. I have you know! You feel your robes suddenly spark with magic, and the fabric slips through its fingers like water. Your outfit helped you against the constructs. Oh, that's handy. You turn down a narrow street, but up ahead you see the constructs have formed a barricade with their bodies, linked arm in arm. Heretics dispersed! That looks like it's going to be a problem. Mm, I need to draw, charge them through the barricade. You breathe deep, let the panic course through you, making your heart pound in your chest and strength flood your muscles. You barrel right into the constructs as the first tumbles to the ground and drags the others with it. Strike? We will never get anywhere if we can't shake these guards. Perhaps a bottleneck of our own is in order. She draws several small glittering bags from her, or balls from her bags, and tosses them behind her. They explode, sending chunks of building falling into the alley to form a makeshift barrier. Your mom is so much cooler than you. I'm well aware, believe me. Save it. I'll drain the ones at the front. Aaron, with me. You and Aaron reach out your hands, drawing the energy from the first constructs you see. The constructs drop to their knees and then completely collapse, further blocking the way for the other guards behind them. Well done, Thistle. Where did you learn that from? Rain. We kind of taught each other. Allow us to handle the rest. Ready when you are, elf boy. Girl's hand alights with fire, while Mal ducks low, spectral daggers appearing between his fingers. A Okay, that artwork I actually really enjoy. And now we're just faced with a black screen. Come on now. The flames streak from Tyrell's hands, rising into the remaining groups of constructs exploding as they impact. And their cries come to an erupt halt as Mal's daggers streak through the air, plunging deep into their chests. That was the last of them. Let's go. You and your party go careening through the streets and alleys. We're nearly there. But then you hear an ominous creak, the look, and time to see a construct hefting a massive wooden cart down at you. Get my friends out of the way. <clears throat> With a burst of speed, you dart toward and shove him toward and Tyrell into another alley. What are you- Move. 
You, Tyrrell and Imtura, cover your heads as the carts crashes into the ground, right where you were just standing. Thanks, Rain. That would have hurt. Imtura turns and throws one of her axes at the construct on the roof, and he topples off the edge. I will always keep you safe. Are you getting solved on me there, Lanrat? For you, always. That's a bad way, bad pun. Anyway, <laughs> Imtora gives you a crooked grain, throwing her arm around your shoulders and pulling you in for a quick hug. The feeling's mutual. Shh. Arena throws her arms out, urging you all to press against the wall of the alley as deep and a familiar voice reaches your ears. Shield wall! Nope, that's not good enough. Go again! You peer around the corner to see Nithrix ordering the constructs above, about while Midas leans against a wall. <sighs> we do not have time for drills, brother. We must be perfect, sister. We cannot show them a weak point. Midas isn't floating. And Nithrix looks almost scared? That's not possible. Nithrix is never scared. How are they acting? It does not matter. We cannot allow you to be seen by the old gods or all will be lost. I can get you to the vault, Serena. You save as many as you can up there. You will draw their better eye better than I. If that is what you think is best. Kilma. I will see you again soon, my Jen Valier. That is a promise. But I will not send you forth empty-handed. She draws out a thick piece of metal from her bag, then clicks a button, and it springs open into an elaborate spell shot, thrumming with magic. We call that a crossbow. It once belonged to Luda of House Skywarren, a magnificent artificer. It said she even snuck into Zeradun to train with the dwarves. Are you sure you won't need it? There are many traps in the vaults below. I believe it will serve you better than it would me. I also suspect Luda would have wanted a friend of the dwarves to have it. I'll take it. I'm very glad to hear you say that. She hands it over to you and you examine it closely, noticing a small dial on the underside. So, that's how you choose what to channel? That's... Who goes there? You all freeze as two constructs come around the corner. With your hands still on the dial, you raise your new spell shot and take aim. We can barely see it on us. I'm just saying. I'll set the crossbow to... Oops, baby. You pull the trigger and two bolts shoot out of it, honing on the constructs and freezing them both solid as they strike. Whoa, you didn't say it double fired. It should be very useful just for disarming traps. Mal stares at it in awe. I'm not even mad about getting replaced. No one ever could, Mal, Valora. You must be move swiftly. May the hopes of the ancestors guide your steps. Cool, I guess. You got Skywarden spell shot. Woot. Leaving Serenia behind, you follow Ariana from shadow to shadow along the main streets until the gate leading to the Ring of Dawn is only a block away. We still have to dispatch the guards in order to get into the inner district, but if our plan worked, there should be fewer of them. Any ideas for taking these guys out without making a huge scene? I suggest you distract the guards so I and your two rogues may subdue them. The rest should wait here two rogues, but we only have... She's talking about you, princeling. Oh. How would you like to handle this, Rain? Mmm, how about I divine the best way forward? You close your eyes and focus on your own heartbeat, pushing time forward in your mind. You see yourself approaching the gate, alongside Tyrrell, the guard's weapons remaining at their size. Right, elves are allowed into the Ring of Dawn. Come on, Daryl. I need an elf. Oh, that makes sense. Daryl strides confidently up to the construct standing guard while you hang back. 
Open the gate. I need to enter the Ring of Dawn. By order of the Queen, none should may pass. I wouldn't be so sure about that. One of the guards abruptly collapses. The other two rapidly follow, revealing Mal, Aaron, and Ariana. Moments later, another group of constructs comes rushing th out through the gate. Is there no end to these guys? Stop! In the name of the light! Don't sp You don't speak for the light. There's a loud crack, and an invisible force sends two of the constructs through the air and slams them into a wall. Pin the rest of them down, make them halt. I'm gonna use that ability, why not? You stare the constructs down as magic fills your voice, sending it booming down the street. Halt! They come to an abrupt stop and each look to you, as though for direction. Now punch each other in the face. They slam their fists into each other's faces, and then collapse unconscious. Back she chuckles. I wish Nefara had seen that. As you step through the gate, the change between the two sides is literal night and day. The rain of the Ring of Dusk becomes bright sun showers on glimmering elven architecture, and you can hear the sounds of partying all around. I'd say this feels like home if the thought didn't unnerve me so. Where to now? With all the commotion we've caused, the guards will be on alert for the next hour or so. That will make things more challenging. We should split up and scout ahead, make it more difficult for them to spot us. I am well practiced in waiting, and can see its value here, but you know your troops best, Rain. This is the perfect time for me to teach you all the best ways to dodge attacks and traps, Kit. From what Ariana's told us, that should come in handy where we're going. Doesn't that seem a bit risky right now? I've always found a little risk tends to lessen, make lessons stick better. And you know, I'll uh, take any excuse to have some alone time with you. Don't get me wrong, I dig the music. It's actually, you know, got a good beat to it. And now it's gone. Splitting off from the rest of your group, you follow Mal into an empty temple-like building. But as soon as you cross the threshold, he turns and swings at you. Think fast! But I need to dodge, flick, block, dodge. You duck your head low, barely evading the blow in time. Way to stay sharp, glad to see we've got a base to work with. Not really fair for you to come at me when I wasn't expecting it. Your enemies won't fight fair. Gotta learn how to deal with it. He jabs at you again, and you dodge and dodge again, falling into a steady dance of fists and footsteps. So, how are you doing? Is now really the time to talk about this? Mm, we're not actively being attacked, so I'm taking advantage of the only chance I might get. Honestly, it's been kind of a relief to just fight regular people again. I know they're constructs, but after all the gods we've had to deal with lately, it's a welcome change of pace. What do you think about... El Hollis? It's awful to say, but I like it, especially the Ring of Dusk. Every inch felt like home. He sighs as he nearly lands a hit on you, which is really depressing, actually. No, I get it. There's comfort in stuff that's familiar, even if it's not necessarily good, and there is a certain beauty in all that rain. Until you remember, that's all they ever get, all anyone living there will ever get. You've been thinking about your mom, then I take it. I should have known that's where this was going to go. When he takes another swing at you, you fully miss your dodge, getting jabbed lightly in the stomach. Come on, Rain. I know you know how to multitask. I'm just worried about you, is all. There's nothing to worry about, Rain, really. I don't have any answers, and I am already feel selfish just thinking about it. Selfish? Why? Considering choosing her life, her over the people in the living world, the kids, our friends, you... It just feels wrong. Mel... You have so much life ahead of you. Don't let the past rule your present. You have to keep moving forward. But she's not my past, Rain. She's right there, you know? He waves his hand in the vague direction of the rivers that flow overhead outside. I thought I'd make peace with her being gone, with my childhood being gone, but when I saw her, it all came flooding back. 
I know, Mel, and I'm so sorry that you had to go through that. But if you spend so much time looking back, you'll never see what's right in front of you. I know. That's why I hate that I'm even thinking about it. Mel takes a step back from you, dropping his fighting stance to frustratingly run a hand through his hair. I was on the same page a lot as the kids at the orphanage, or now, when I lost her, I can't leave them. I shouldn't. You don't have to decide yet, Mal. There's no point in torturing yourself for thinking. Now, I believe you were supposed to be teaching me about dodging attacks and traps. Dodging emotions, too. Yeah, us men have that on a, you know, pretty iron grip. He gives you a cheeky grin, and you shake your head. Lucky for you, you've already got a lot of experience fighting, so you can handle people and traps the same way. It's all about reacting the moment you see something start to happen. Mal reaches for his spectral daggers, and you shoot a hand out, grabbing his wrist to stop him. Like that. Don't get cocky now. He flips one dagger to you, then strikes out, barely giving you time to parry. Hey! Think about where the blade's going, not where it is. He weaves the dagger between your arms and gives you a gentle pat with the flat side of the blade. Or better yet, don't think at all. Taking this to heart, you let yourself focus purely on Mal, watching as his blade finishes up to strike you. I'll parry, flip out of the way. I mean, more distance you put between him and a blade is better. You throw yourself back away from the strike, landing on your hands and then springing back onto your feet. That was that. I always appreciate a bit of a flash, kit. Well done. Well, someday I might even be better than you. You pass Mal back his dagger, and he tucks it away with the others. I'm gonna have to watch my back, and I mean that in the best way. Mel, I want you to do more than watch. It does need a discussion. Mal presses you against the broken stone wall, sending up a cloud of dust, but once his lips touch yours, you don't care. He breathes your name like a demand, like a reverent plea, yearning for everything you are and everything you could be. Rain. You silence him with another kiss and clutch him close, unwilling to be parted for even a moment. He tastes like of amber and smoke, a warm, familiar comfort, like he's your anchor in a turbulent storm, keeping you safe and grounded. Do you want me to say it? Yes. He kisses his way down your neck, nipping playfully at the tender skin there and making you gasp. I love you, Mel. Gods. I love you too, Rain. How much time do you think we have left? You wave your fingers through his hair and he lets out a low groan as he surges forward to kiss you again. There's a fire burning between you and all passion and desire. It's with great reluctance that the two of you break apart panting for breath. Not enough. We should catch up with the others and see what they found. Mal takes a peek out the building and then leads you back into the streets to rejoin your party. One more elite skill to go. One combat and one survival. Look at me go. After weaving Suset carefully through the streets of the Ring of Dawn, Arena throws open a cellar door and ushers you down into an underground passageway. This feels a little dark to be in a Pharaoh's vault, don't you think? Yeah, I'm not a big fan either, buddy. She is more comfortable with the shadows than she lets on. Aren't we all? Now, be on the lookout. There will be traps. Yeah, it's hard to hide a trap in light. As if an answer to her words, you hear something click and whir in the wall beside your head. Take cover! Hide behind Nia, use my shield, manipulate the stone. Yes, hide behind Nia, <laughs> Jesus Christ. You drop to the ground and scramble over to duck behind Nia, who throws up a force field all around all of you. It's like listening to a rainstorm as a dozens of arrows pelt down in the glowing light. I can't hold this for long. As a final hail of arrows bears down on you, Nia's shield collapses and one strikes the stone right beside your ear. That was way too close. With a trap neutralized, you carefully continue on, eyes peeled and ears straining. So, how did you find out about this place? People... Uh, 
I have little to do here other than talk. It is just so happens that the Masons who built the vaults were human. Not that Nefero would ever admit it. She likely didn't wish for any of the import to know about her vault. I'm not sure it would have made much difference, given most of the elves here seem content to spend their afterlives on frivolity. The elves here don't know any better. They show up here, they're sent to an isolated place, they're given everything they could ever want. They don't see anything outside their bubble. Yeah, it's called an echo chamber. I mean, she doesn't even have them serving her. She built a whole new set of people for that. It's like she's spoiling them. Or she thought they weren't strong enough to enforce her will on the Ring of Dusk. Not strong enough or perhaps too kind. I'm kind of surprised Nefara is okay with all the partying, though. It seems like the elves would be far too busy to do much worshipping. But worship they do. How else do you think I maintain my powers? Your powers are based on belief. In a way. We are immensely powerful on our own, but down here, the veneration of our subjects gives us power over them we have not earned. So that's why you spoil the elves. That's how you've tricked them into worshipping you. No more so than many of the other belief systems. Do you think that your end of all things would be what they are without the shared beliefs of the dwarves? He has a point. That's different. The end of all things isn't actively exploiting them for power. They welcome everyone. Yeah, but it's still the same. Same with the elements. I do not mean to offend. As I have said, I am not comfortable with the world I have helped build. But this is the current stage. Unless we acknowledge it, it cannot be undone. You're quite quiet, mother. I'm only concentrating, Thistle. This is not the best place for a philosophical debate. There are some sort of fire trap ahead. I can see the mechanism, but not what triggers it. Hmm. Let me weave through the flames. Are you pure about that? Won't you get hurt? Just watch her, elf boy. You take a run towards the mechanism, and as soon as you hear a click, you twist away from the sound. Moments later, a gout of sickly green flame shoots out of the wall right where you'd been standing. See? I got this. As more and more fire spews out of the walls, you duck and flip through the burst until you land beside the mechanism. Ta-da! I think my heart stopped for a moment. Listen up, elf boy. It was entertaining. Better than any floor show and flotilla, for sure. You're certainly full of surprises. You turn the mechanism off and continue for Aaron steps closer to Ariana while the rest of you fall off. What else do you know about this weapon, Mother? Not as much as I'd like. I don't know how it functions, or even what it looks like. If it can kill a god, it's our best chance. She looks back at the two of you. Why don't you just summon Kratos? Seriously. <laughs> I wonder, when you get the weapon, what will you do with it, Rain? Kill Nafara, I assume? We'll make her fix everything. You'd let her live. That's for up for debate. We haven't met her yet. I'd rather not have to kill anyone, if I have a choice, though I'm not sure she's going to give me much one. I've, I've found the threat of dying can be very motivating. You're interrupted by another click just in front of you. You can practically feel as everyone around you throws themselves to the floor, Ariana included, but you and Aaron are too close. Rain, look out! Aaron leaps in front of you, taking the br 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 brunt of the impact from a massive weight that swings down from the ceiling. You're both thrown backwards, and you hear a savage pair of cracks as you hit the ground. Rain, are you okay? We're already dead. I'm, I'm just saying, we're already dead. I think I twisted my ankle pretty bad, but... You turn to look at Aaron, whose leg is sticking out at an at unnatural angle. Pain evident on his face. I'm so sorry, Thistle. I fear I'm losing my touch. I don't know how I didn't see that. How about Mal? It's all right, Mother. There was not enough to take any of my memories. Let me see what I can do. Healing doesn't quite work the same way down here, but I think I've gotten the hang of it. Nia kneels at his side, 
her hands starting to glow with the magic as she places them over his injured leg. Nia, you don't have to. I mean, I don't want to impose. What I'm trying to say is that I, I wouldn't blame you if you did not wish to use your magic on me. Aaron. You just saved my life. You're part of this group, the same as the rest of the group, and we look out after our own. I suppose I'm still not used to that. Rain is right. I know our relationship is complicated, but that doesn't mean I want you to suffer. Thank you. That that is more than I deserve. Nia pulls her hands away, only for the f only to frown. She realizes that the wound has only started to knit together. Maybe I haven't figured it out after all. Uh, that should have been enough to fix everything. Back she holds up their hand and draws a sigil in the air, only to scowl as it fizzles out. It isn't you, Nia. There is an infernal magic at work here. Infernal? As in the hells? Yes. Nafara must have uh, used it to curse this place, ensuring any injury is taken here last, no doubt in the hopes of trapping intruders. All the more reason to press on. But Aaron can't continue as he is. Let's at least stop until I can fix him up enough that he can walk on his own. Of course, Nia. Uh, do what you need to do. The rest of us will keep a lookout. No offense, Rain, but I don't like the idea of just sitting here. Me neither. Something feels off, like there's something waiting out there. Now why don't we three of us go and find it, take it out before it can take us out. If you think your leg can handle it, Rain, I'm certain there will be more items of use down there if this is truly Navarra's vault. And based on what I've heard from Imtori, this is exactly the sort of bonding exercise we could use in a tense moment like this one. I'm sure I thought the dwarven catacombs were fun, and we got swarmed by undead dwarves down there. And this will even be better than that. Mm, Wallace agrees. See, Wallace agrees with me. Let it go. Let's go. You lay him carefully down the hallway you find, ensuring you don't put too much pressure on your sprained ankle. You must be careful, Rain. You need to take care of yourself. Wallace gently nudges, nuzzles against your hurt leg, his big eyes full of worry as he looks up at you. I'm really bad at that. Between the world being in danger and looking after my friends, I don't have much time for it. We can slow down, Rain. You just have to say the word. We can. At least not right now. We have to keep moving or Navarra's going to win. Would it help if I carried you, Rain? I appreciate the sentiment of Alex, but no, I need a different kind of rest. Fortunately, the last time I tried to take one, we all died. Yeah, that's not very positive reinforcement, that's for sure. No point dwelling on it now. We should all focus on where we are. Gotta say, as much as I hate this city, meeting Serenia and Ariana has helped me understand Elfboy and Princeling a lot more. Tyrell's mom has the same sense of duty. She's clearly uh, more comfortable being vulnerable than he is. It's because she's a woman, he's a guy. I think he used to be, before everything happened with Kai and Xenia. It has been fun watching his face turn colors when Serenia tells stories about him. And for the record, your face also turns colors when you're embarrassed. It does not! Alex's cheeks flush a dark purple and both of you and Imtora burst into laughter. Um, she's got you there, Violet. Go back to talking about your other companions, please. Ariana's a little trickier. I feel like I understand more and less about Aaron with her. How so? I can tell who Aaron wants her to be, you know? And she's definitely trying to be it, but there's some sort of gap there. Or maybe I just don't know what it's like to have a parent who cares what you think. Alex gives him Tora's shoulder and understanding the squeeze. I think they're still figuring things out. I'm glad the two of you have gotten so close. I had a feeling you'd get along knowing everything you had in common, but this is even better than I hoped. I'm Tora's tough smile and one of the biggest you've seen recently, and Valix looks just as happy. It's nothing fancy. It is nice to feel included. Because, of course, we're going to include you, Violet. You have a nickname and everything. A nice nickname. That's an important distinction. 
around a corner to find a particularly collapsed antechamber with a strange glowing lantern at the center. A wisp lantern, I've only heard of these in tales. Um, what's it do? It holds wisps, small, powerful beings of pure energy, and allows you to direct them. Sounds like it could make a pretty useful weapon. She steps forward. Or a light. Imtora, wait. God damn it. It's too late. You hear that telltale click and something shifts, and within the dungeon, red hot lava begins to fill the room. Oops. You and Valix leap up onto the rubble on one side of the room. I got you, Bear Feathers. He has Wallace up onto the rock and follows after him as the lava begins to rise. Any suggestions, Rain? You scan the walls as sweat starts to bead on the back of your neck from the heat. Then you see it. There's a suspicious looking lever over there. You know what they say about suspicious looking levers. That they're sus? We need to combine our abilities, work smarter, not harder, jump between the rocks to get there. Work smarter, not harder. What do you mean? Yeah, no, you're not included in this. We can literally... <laughs> we can literally create anything we need with our minds, and we have magic. I think we can handle a lever. Oh, that does make more sense. God damn it. Surrounded by idiots. With a flick of her wrist, a cord of pure shadow flies out of Alex's hand and coils around the lever. She gives it a sharp tug, jerking the lever down, and the lava flow immediately stops, rapidly cooling. Neat. What did I tell you? You look back at Wallace, who's still perched on a piece of rubble, eyeing the ground suspiciously. It's alright, buddy. You're safe. Now, for our prize. You cross the floor to the wisp lantern, picking it up to examine the tiny fire that burns inside. Hi, little guy. I told you this would be fun, Rain. You got the wisp lantern. That's one word for it. Let's return to the others before Imtura grabs something else she shouldn't. It turned out fine. Better than fine. Hmm, it was nice that something only passively was trying to kill us this time. As Valix and Imtura head to the door, you pause, looking between your companions. Oh, what? The two of them bonded. We could have a whole girl thing. Alright, we'll pick him to her. I was unfair to her. <laughs> uh, Alex gives you a dutiful nod and picks up Wallace, scaring him back to your friends. At least you can get over how weird this place is. I try not to judge it, but it's just really a mess. I know every place could be improved with cute animals, but this place especially... I think they're having a much better time hanging out in the endless ocean. And Tora lets out a sigh. She looks back at the door. Have you been doing okay with Seriana and Ariana here? I know seeing Mal with his mom is hard. We've got a lot of time to focus on here than we did back at the River of Seekers, but... Yeah, it's hard. I'm sorry, Imtora. It's not even just that. I just wish I had a chance like that. It's just... I feel even more out of place than I normally do. I'm Tora. Your place is by my side. No oh, rain. I mean it. Back when we got eaten by the ghost or the great whale, when I thought I'd lost you, I felt like I was falling apart. She steps close to you and wraps her you in her big, strong arms, the warmth of her soothing the tension in your body. Don't worry, Land Rat. I'll always find you and put you back together. I love you. I love you too. She pulls you close until your lips find hers, and all the horrors and pain you found in this place fall away. You're a ship cradled by our sea, safe in the comfort of her embrace. And this right here being in your arms, that's where I'm meant to be. She surges forward to crash her lips against yours again, this one full of barely restrained passion like you're the only thing in the world that matters. Even when you break apart, she ducks down to kiss at your neck, her tusks grazing across your skin. You can't just say things like that. Not when we've still got work to do. She lets you go and takes a reluctant step back, but not without taking your hand first. We'll have time for that later. See, come on. We should go see if Nia's done healing Aaron. And Tora nods and the two of you head out of the chamber and back to the rest of your friends. 
Once Neo finishes standing Darren's leg, she helps him back to his feet, though he still winces when he takes a step forward. I'm afraid that's the best I can do right now without stalling us further. There's no need. It feels much better than it did. Thank you. We'll get you fixed up fully when we have the weapon and we've uh, gotten out of this awful place. Pushing deeper in the dungeon, you finally come upon a simple wooden door at the end of a long hall. I think we're through the worst of it, but just in case, Bakshi, would you do the honors? Open. The door swings open, but there's no click of a trap activating. With a smile, Ariana ushers you on to the dark chamber. And before she's Nefara, you know, considering she uh, claims to be the light, I'd uh, have thought her vault would be better lit. Allow me. Cheryl lights up his sword, but there's no weapon or treasure to be found in the room. Only a massive pit. This doesn't look right. I'm afraid here is where we part ways. I, I called it, didn't I? I just called this shit. You whip around confused, only to see Ariana lingering in the doorway. Stop. In an instant, Ariana throws up a dart, it lodges in the back of she's neck, and their eyes go wide as they fall to their knees, gasping for air. You forget, you are massively outnumbered. But the moment Valix moves, Ariana holds up another dart, stopping her in her tracks. That's what I thought. I don't understand what's going on, Mother. Looks like the apple doesn't fall very far from the tree. I knew it was a trap. I knew it. Yeah, you and me both. But you didn't know I was the one doing the trapping. You wouldn't hurt your son. You don't know anything about me, Rain. You try to step forward yourself, but wince as your ankle nearly gives out. She laughs at you. Oh dear, what an unfortunate injury. Didn't you find it odd that someone as skilled as I failed to help with a single trap? Nope. I call that too. No. You've been trying to get us hurt since the beginning. Oh, you're going to make quite the present to Nefara. I really thought you'd have learned your lesson by now, Rain. You cannot put your faith in anyone. Isn't that right, Thistle? You all look at Aaron just as his eyes start to burn with anger, hiding the pain and hurt behind a scowl. I would never join you. I don't want you. Her laugh is deep, cold, like a frozen leg. Do you know why I really called you Thistle? A Thistle could be many things. A poison to your enemies, a balm to your family. You are neither. You are nothing. Aaron looks as though he's been slapped his lower lip trembling as another piece of him breaks. I was so proud of you, Aaron! When I saw you at the, the Dread Lord, you were so close to making something of yourself. But, just like your father, do cowardly to make an actual impact on the world, leaving me to do everything. Aaron is more than you. Eh, Arlan couldn't even find him, my killer. He hardly even tried! Killer? But he said you were sick. He never... You were murdered. Cold motive. Still betrayal. It's not Aaron's fault that you got what you deserved. No, it's not his fault. It was nothing in life and continues to be nothing now. And who are you in comparison? A footnote in a history book? I was White Tower's best kept secret. The court was mine to command. None dared cross our gentle king with me holding a knife to their throats. I was a queen. And now you're just God's lackey, pathetic. There's a fury in her gaze in behind the wicked smile. You know, I was quite looking forward to handing you over, the blue friend's pathetically naive mother and all of her allies, but given how much greater the reward will be for all of you, I think I'm going to enjoy this even more. How could you? How could you? It's all right, Princeling. We're not going down without a fight. Mal flings a dagger right at Ariana, but by the time he releases it, she's already let him loose another dad dart. Mal! It strikes Mal right in the chest, and he falls back into your arms, his body rigid and eyes pained. Got you! 
You turn to see her scowling as she pulls a dagger out of her shoulder and tosses it to the ground. You dare! You better run to Nefora real quick, because I'm going to send you to hell if it's the last thing I do. Funny you should mention those. She pulls a lever, and you're suddenly weightless, the ground falling away beneath you. All you can do is cry out as you're swallowed by darkness. We Down we go. Oh. Without further ado, before I get to saying what I gotta say, please remember that if you did enjoy the chapter, to like, share, and subscribe. Head down description, plenty of things to check out, ways to support, whatnot. Um, so, yeah. Um. As you can see, there become VIP. I pretty much canceled my sub, so just letting you know. Um, will I cover more stuff for VIP? Probably, but, um, this is just kind of like a little um info for each and every one of you that continues to joyfully and loy loyal loyfully i was gonna go with loyfully oh boy loyally excuse me uh each one of you who loyally continues to keep your subscription to choices that's great you know that's you um i'm doing it because i'm sharing the content with everybody especially for those who don't wish to and or can't um so this is just a little pro tip for you if you let your subscription run out, okay, every time you click that little thing that says, hey, I want to become, you know, subscribed, pretty much one, you get 185 diamonds immediately as a thank you gift. This isn't over time. This isn't how much you would get over the month. This is literally and figuratively. At least get something. I'm just, I'm just saying. At least get something. Um, so what I did was is I just let it run out and then I'll end up getting it because yeah, you guys are literally and figuratively the only reason I continue to read this content. Otherwise, there's a million other things I would rather be doing right now. So just letting you know that. So let your subs cancel. So what you can do is, is just give you a little tip, is you can go ahead and order it, and I'll do it right here. Hold on. So pretty much refresh it, and wait for it. Right here. That's a thank you gift plus your $30 or 30 diamonds check-in. Yeah, real nice, great, amazing. BFD. Um, I, I would suggest to you, because Choices isn't always the best about this, um, there's been some times where I'll do the renewal, and it's like on a Wednesday or something, and for whatever reason, it doesn't kick back in, as you saw here. Seems it's got a little bit better, and it's almost instant, but there were times where it would take a couple hours to half a day to be able to get VIP to register, so I'm glad they at least fixed some of those issues. But um, aside from that... Um, yeah, what, what else do you want me to say? Oh, yeah, um, today is Bitten, so we're caught up on all choices, pretty much, for the wide release. Bitten's coming out, crime, and better served hot. Again, if it wasn't for you guys, I would not cover this shit. I, I would be saving $16.11 with tax um, each and every month, and we would be covering other things or giving it to other apps like RC or any other game or literally and figuratively anything. Uh, so again, if you do enjoy the content, please try and support the channel. Uh, again, it comes out of my pocket. So thanks again for watching. Catch you all later. Peace out.